are you the guardian? I am a warden of eternal. Welcome back to Marvelous Videos. I'm Rylan, and this is the Top Halo Monsters Explored. It has been two decades since we first met Master Chief and his AI ally Cortana, trying to take down the intergalactic zealots, hell bent on conquering our galaxy with their mysterious and massive ring world structures called Halos. Since then, we've been through a hell of a ride with our dynamic duo and their fellow Spartans, including a shocking heel turn that would put Hollywood Hogan to shame. Halo's meteoric rise to gaming's Mount Rushmore is a result of its gameplay and storyline points meddling together in a brain-melting cocktail of Eldritch Apocalypse that aims to give you, the player, an immersive experience like you've never had before. Judging by the sales figures for Halo Infinite, we think they've succeeded. There's something so unnervingly satisfying about picking up your controller and losing yourself in 26th century space, POV killing aliens with plasma grenades, and good old ARs. And with the advancements in gaming technology, the progression of Halo's gameplay elements has been perfect, introducing more dynamic and gore-satisfying kill methods while never veering away from the golden triangle that forms the core of every Halo playthrough. Weapons, grenades, melee. But what makes our boxes tick are the villains. Halo's legacy might be inextricably linked to our mostly silent Spartans, but it's the Lovecraftian threat of cosmic horrors engulfing you in your universe that spurs you into action. Some of them are ferocious, while others are subtle in their own ways. But that makes no difference. They're all uniquely terrifying in their own regard. So let's meet these buggers. Here we present to you the top Halo monsters explored. Before we get into today's explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is just a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thanks. Now, let's begin. What is that? I, I am a monument to all your sins. Grave mind. Frank Herbert is one of the most influential science fiction writers of all time, and his Dune saga is seminal to the genre. But we're pretty sure that the Grave Mind edges out the Leto II in the omniscient threat to the universe competition. It is a sentient, organic hive mind that rules over the creatures spawned by the parasitic precursor plague known as the Flood. Hundreds of thousands of organic biomasses, human and flood infected, accumulated over countless years, gave rise to this grotesque monstrosity whose single mission in life is to assimilate all life forms in a galaxy, and then move on to another to repeat the process, until the entire universe becomes droplets in the waking nightmare of the Flood infestation. Players couldn't immediately make out its corporal form when it was first introduced in Halo 2, but perhaps that was for the best. This thing looks like the literal manifestation of our collective nightmares. The Grave Mind appears as a sandworm-like entity, capable of shooting out tentacles to ensnare targets that are miles away. It acts as a flood-generated factory, exhaling flood spores which spread like wildfire throughout Installation 05 and quickly take over any sentient life forms that they encounter. The Grave Mind is highly intelligent as well. Its name is an allusion to the fact that it has assimilated so many living beings into itself that it is a literal mind of the grave. Its consciousness compiles the intelligence and memories of every flood host ever consumed, giving it such a grasp over unfolding events that it can actually predict the future, making it seem prescient. But what makes it such an existential threat is the fact that the grave mind is an organic artificial intelligence system capable of operating and combating the most advanced forms of technology depicted in the entire franchise, even to the extent of imprisoning Cortana at one point. You will never fight this guy head on, but he will toy with you for two full titles and will make you squirm with every meeting. Whether it's the mind warping appearance or its menacingly calm demeanor, this is not your grave, but you are welcome in it. Kill the demon! Prophet of Truth the Sand Chime has a chokehold on the Covenant's technological process and religiosity, being the species that discovered their gods and their gifts. As such, they are central to the Covenant's faith and society, and their leaders are often thought as the heralds from their divine. Ord Kasten was a low-level junior staffer in the Covenant's ministry when he first started his career. Within a few years, he was able to trick, outwit, and outright manipulate his way up to the top leading position in the Alien Alliance, becoming 
its de facto leader. As the prophet of truth, he became a living manifestation of greed, dogma, and everlasting thirst for power, leading the covenant in a holy war against mankind, a war he started to fulfill his ambition of breaking the galaxy and re-emerging as its new god. Visually, he isn't all that threatening. Think hunched over, loose-skinned E.T. with a massive Cerebro-esque helm. It's his silent power that makes him so terrifying. The Sanchium and the Sangeli were bitter enemies before the former encounter Forerunner technology and forged an alliance with the latter to exploit it to its fullest extent and transcend on the Great Journey. Much like Leto's Golden Path, but the difference between divine leadership and fanatical tyranny lies in choice, and Ord Kasten chose to forgo his god's direction. The Forerunner's Oracle revealed to him that they intended humanity to be their successors. Kasten chose to take that position for himself. The original Halo Trinity centers around his choice, which saw his plan to usurp the cosmic throne of power come into motion. He launched a war against humanity and replaced the Sangeli elites with Jirohanai brutes as the protective guard of the prophets, making his species ancient enemy for genocide in essence. If everything worked out according to plan, the flood would be contained, mankind would be vanquished, and the Jiralhanai would cease to pose a threat to his rule. Mercifully, that came to an end when the Arbiter impaled Truth in Halo 3 with one of the coolest kill lines in gaming history. I am Truth, the voice of the Covenant, and so you must be silenced. Chills. Atriox. Atriox is like Halo's dark side. Cold, calculating, brutal, and utterly driven by the sole purpose of wielding power. When the Covenant fell, there was chaos. Different species splintered off from the Lost Empire and migrated to other galaxies and solar systems to sustain themselves. Out of the ashes rose Atriox, a wrongfully disgraced Jirohanai warrior who leads his band of banished men across the solar system, accumulating power by any and all means. He has the typical appearance of the Jiral Hanai, a hulking, apish figure rippled with muscle, covered in custom-picked armor pieces, and donning some rather bad beard braids. But even amongst his insanely powerful brute brethren, Atriox was always a cut above, vicious, killing, and a brilliant strategist, making him a deadly warrior and a skilled ward master. He isn't above using unconventional means to meet his ends, or deploying tried and tested tactics multiple times to great effect and holds an extremely pragmatic view of the battlefield. This detachment allows him to concoct the ideal plan of action that will guarantee his success, and his success is measured in raids, with Atriox quickly becoming one of the most feared intergalactic pirate lords in existence. Even his weapon oozes menace and bloodlust. Chainbreaker, a modified Type 2 gravity hammer, is going to be the last thing you will ever see if Atriox breaks it out. Just ask some crew members of the Spirit of Fire. It is capable of generating three energy-based blades, which glow red and can cut through basically anything. All you can do is try to resist and fail, as Chainbreaker pulls you in for the kill. With a stranglehold on rare technology, including Forerunner tech, a frantically devoted army, and an absolute killing machine in his hands, Atriox is one of Halo's best villains yet. Every time you think he's done, he comes back with a vengeance, and if the ending of Halo Infinite is anything to go by, Next time we see him, things will get very real, very quick. The Flood The Flood is a cosmic manifestation of the phrase, A dying man's curse will haunt you forever. Thousands of millennia before Master Chief ever boarded a Halo, there was a war between the Forerunners and their predecessors and creators the Precursors. This conflict spanned across three centuries that brought this once dominant species to the brink of extinction, or so we thought. You see, the Precursors didn't die out. They simply morphed into an entity that is fueled by the winds of rage. The survivors of the Precursor race escaped to Path Cathona and transformed themselves into a fine powder, hoping to resuscitate themselves when the conditions were right. Eons of hate and humiliation corrupted their wills, however and turned this Hail Mary failsafe into a biological nightmare. Simply called the Flood, this parasitic entity began invading and infecting all sentient life that it encountered, mutating them into genetic freaks 
with tendril-like appendages and an appetite for destruction. Its guerrilla tactics were so effective that the forerunners ended up creating the halos as a worst-case scenario. In case of a near-successful flood infestation, they would detonate them and wipe out any trace of flood parasites, repopulating the galaxy with the silexes after the proverbial and literal dust had settled. Things clearly didn't go according to plan, because the flood has been everywhere since it first appeared in Halo 2. Taking over Covenant and US command operatives alike, these alien parasites are fast, hard-hitting, and will swarm you in waves if you don't pay attention. Flood-infected troop units have had their base attributes shot through the roof, putting you at an immediate disadvantage. If you let the flood go unchecked, it will spawn a proto-gravemind sooner or later. And if you've been paying attention, you already know why that is some grim news in itself. So fades the great harvest of my betrayer. The Dead Act The primary antagonist for the fourth installment in the franchise should serve as a reminder for all of us, belief is a hair's breadth from turning into insanity. The mantle of responsibility is a core belief shared by all forerunners. All life in the universe is equally precious and must be preserved above everything else if possible. The Didact was, by all accounts, a staunch believer who wanted to avert confrontations at all costs, despite the fact that he looks like Lord Voldemort with fangs. He was even offended by the creation of the Halos, seeing them as the ultimate WMD, a cosmic atomic bomb that would wipe out all life. Despite his expert leadership that would make the Forerunner War Machine unstoppable during the Forerunner Human War, he chose to exile himself at its conclusion. So you can imagine our terror when we realized just who had taken control of the Storm Covenant and what his plans were. The last Forerunner, driven insane by the Gravemind-sized threat of the Flood, had convinced himself that the Forerunners were the ones capable of wielding the mantle and the humans needed to be terminated for the universe to survive. He donned his badass Tron Legacy-esque armor, digitally composed his Promethean Knights, and was ready to wipe out all the Flood and humanity when he was imprisoned by the Librarian. Enter Master Chief Petty Officer John 117 and Cortana, who managed to release his cosmic threat and allow it to find equally ravenous allies. Though the climactic boss fight has to be one of the worst in Halo history, we cannot deny the fact that the looming threat of this ancient, twisted, and vengeful being kept us on the edge of our chairs. No, Arbiter. The great journey has begun, and the brutes, not the elite, shall be the prophet's escort. Tartarus. If a soldier's worth is measured by their loyalty, and Tartarus is the model soldier for the Covenant. The right-hand man of the Prophet of Truth, this Jiralhanai brute, is a monster even amongst his brethren. Nine feet of pure muscle and violence, though his silver fur indicates his age, the fanged beast's true strength is reflected by his smoldering red eyes. Conviction in the Prophets Tartarus is deeply devout and loyal to a fault, an intergalactic Victorian Creejoy, except this behemoth likes to wield a gravity hammer and mount Sengeli's skulls on his shoulder guard. He is entirely complicit in Truth's grand scheme to take control of the Covenant prior to embarking on the Great Journey. Of course, we know this to be a lie. Truth was going to halo bomb the galaxy and rebuild it from scratch. But try telling that to this beef-headed jock. Somewhat fittingly, he meets his end by the very species that he was trying to dispose of. Tartarus is the first monster on this list that we actually get to fight in an extended battle. And what's cooler is we're not Master Chief anymore. You get to control the Arbiter and add a Shakespearean touch to the send-off. As expected from the Giral Hanai, he is extremely strong, and you definitely want to avoid his gravity hammer if you expect to survive. The best way to play this out is by pelting him with plasma bursts when he's engaged by your team and his shield is down. Your window will be short, two to three seconds at most, so make sure that those shots count. The biggest trick will be the waves of brutes with him. So, keep your distance and stay on the move if you don't want to get smashed into a pulp. Bear witness! Our story will become legend told by those that survive you. Asharam. If Atriox is Darkseid, then Asharam is Steppenwolf, his right-hand man and the second-in-command of the Banished. 
Though he is Atriox's mentor, he was proud of serving as his student's trusted lieutenant. That is, of course, until Atriox presumably died. Having replaced him, he oversees the Banished with an iron fist, where Atriox would show mercy to banished allied humans and other creatures. Asharam propagated views similar to Tartarus and rallied to the Banished around Atriox's holographic presence, establishing a cult of personality that let him rule from the shadows. Asharam is the penultimate boss fight in Halo Infinite, and one of the toughest challenges that Master Chief has faced in the entire franchise. He manages to lure the Spartan by trapping Echo 216 and proceeds to wreck shop. Asharam's shield is connected to an energy field that makes Echo 216 feel the combat damage that it absorbs, essentially torturing him. In order to defeat him, you must disable his shield, which is only possible when you destroy the four relays powering it. Oh, and remember the golden triangle of Halo? You better because one step in the wrong direction can mean instant death. Asharam is deceptively fast and will attack you with more than just his hammer. So, keep your regions on the ready. I thought it might be trying to finish the job, but now I see you weren't trying to hurt the superintendent. You were trying to fix it. Huragok, the only other forerunner creations to feature in this franchise, Huragoks are rather peaceful creatures, honestly. These small tentacled creatures with six beaming eyes fly, thanks to their gas-filled bodies and special limbs that help facilitate movement. And before you question us, yes, it's methane. Yeah, filthy animals. But despite their comical logistics situation, the Huragoks are exceptionally good at repairing machines, and earned them the nickname Engineers from the humans. The dogma of the Covenant stated the prophets as the harbingers of technological advancements, when in fact, it was the Huragogs who helped reverse engineer all the Forerunner tech that they came across. They can split their tentacles into millions of cilia, create a special beam that can repair things in a matter of seconds, making them an invaluable asset for any side to have. Unfortunately for us, it's mostly with the bad guys, where they serve as field medics, mechanics, and amplifiers alike. They are the only thing that can heal, repair, or augment your enemy units, so taking them out first should be a priority on your list. If its attending squadron has been defeated, the Huragog will self-destruct in a last-ditch effort to cause damage, though mostly it will just try to get out of the way and curl up into a ball to avoid a fight. It just wants to fix things, okay? You are not. That sounds like a threat. Vacate his shelter now! Warden Eternal, another Halo title, another forerunner gone genocidal. But at least this time, it wasn't entirely his fault. Well, we don't think anyway. The Warden Eternal was originally created by the Promethean AI designed to protect the galaxy-wide network, known as the Domain. However, once Cortana makes her way to the Domain and turns heel on humanity, he becomes her thrall and second in command. The Warden Eternal has a similar supremacist attitude that was expressed by Didact, except he contends that artificial intelligence will take over the mantle, as opposed to organic life forms, and sees Cortana as the one who will pave that path. As a Promethean AI, he can command identical robot avatars, which instantly brings his numbers up from zero to anywhere over a million. These bodies are no joke either. 16 and a half feet tall, all metal held together by hard light, with a hard light blade and a skull-like face that can shoot laser beams and orb-like projectiles. The Warden Eternal can commandeer up to three bodies simultaneously, and each of them is just as strong as the other. The only way to defeat him is to attack the slipspace bubbles on his body, most notably his back. You can exploit this weakness to force it through the bubble and destroy the body. Since Halo 5 almost entirely focuses on Cortana's descent into the dark side, you're going to be fighting the Warden a lot, like at least five times, and sometimes with backup. So strap yourself in because this is going to be a long playthrough for you. Prophets of Regret The youngest of the trinity of High Prophets of the Covenant, and perhaps the most appropriately named, the Prophet of Regret was the first antagonist of the Halo franchise, and is very close to our hearts. In terms of appearance, he is much like the Prophet of Truth, down to the auto-defensive thrones that the High Prophets occupy. The place where they divulge is their ideology. The Prophet of Truth takes up his designation in an iconic spirit, intending to uncover the truth by constantly lying to his subjects. In comparison, the Prophet of Regret embodied his designation, brash, quick to judge, 
prone to vices and filled with religious fervor that eventually ended with his namesake. In the first game, he attacked Earth, knowing he only had a fraction of the Covenant's power backing him, in a maddening charge exalting the Great Journey. In Halo 2, you get to actually face the San Shum himself, and boy, does it get annoying. Even after clearing through Covenant forces like a lawnmower, you better prepare yourself for a never-ending wave of infinitely sprawling grunts and elites, as you try to take down the hover chair bound Prophet. The only way to damage him is to physically punch him. Your bullets can't hurt him, and neither can those ever-handy plasma grenades. So you gotta deck the slugger old school style. It usually takes five rounds of punches to take him down, but what makes it tricky is the fact that if you don't move quickly, you'll get swarmed by enemy units. So timing is crucial. Keep your distance, keep moving, and time your punch sequences as well as you can. Geklar Brutal, sadistic, and unrelenting in his pursuits, Geklar used to be one of the finest elites of the Covenant. The Sangeli were called the elites for a reason. These predator-esque beings were natural warriors, strong, proud, and intelligent, as well as skilled combat technicians, which made them indispensable to the Covenant's military exploits. Even amongst their well-populated ranks, not much is known about them, except his unwavering loyalty and unflinching ability to commit horrific acts in the name of their gods and prophets. This alone made him a force to reckon with, but after becoming Jules Madama's right-hand man, there was little that could stop this genocidal maniac from realizing his violent fantasies under the auspices of his covenant. He harbors a deep hatred for humans and was a lethal force against them during the human covenant conflict. It seems like he escaped his encounters with them with little trophies of his own. Eleven dog tags, including those of Spartans, allegedly, that he hangs over his shoulders in a cruel display of superiority. It's ironic that he meets his end guarding a human as he was shot and killed by Paul DeMarco while protecting Dr. Henry Glassman on Jules' orders. Jules Madama And we end our list with perhaps the smartest Avenger, no not that one, ever seen in the Halo franchise. And we've seen a boatload of them. A Sengeli elite in service of the Covenant, by the time the Human Covenant War came around, Jules had already become disillusioned with his religion and its overarching figures. He privately started questioning the truth about the Forerunner's mythos, while keeping up a front of religious fanaticism. Turns out, smart move, because after the Great Schism, he used these contacts to stay hidden from the enroaching humans, who had now targeted his homeworld of Sangelios. Unlike the Prophets, he didn't view the humans as heretical demons. His views were harsher. He compared humanity to the Flood an endless parasitic entity that is nowhere near capable enough of becoming galactic rulers, but are good enough to survive any calamity. This Darwinian mirth devolved into a personal vendetta when a UNSC-led attack killed his family. Now fueled by vengeance, Jules Madama established his own covenant and set out to destroy mankind for his own pleasure. Although he displays the signs of aggression and violence that are typical of his species, Jules Madama is an unusually clever Zengeli. He has often tricked humans and aliens alike into divulging sensitive information to him, most notable when he gets his Huragok escort, prone to drift, to reveal information about the Forerunners that confirms his suspicions and opens up a new possibility for him, Requiem and the Didact hidden within. Taking up the mantle of Supreme Commander and manipulating the customs and general knowledge of his species and the general vicinity with expert precision, Jules Madama was successful in becoming the first Covenant member to make contact with their gods, though ironically enough, it happened after he'd lost his faith. He is easily the most prolific Sangeli in the Halo-verse, becoming the Didact's hand, rubbing shoulders with the Librarian, and even receiving the Janus Key, which is a map that displays every piece of Forerunner technology in existence. His complex, layered backstory, coupled with a menacing screen presence and tragic fate, makes him one of Halo's best antagonists to date. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to send a like and subscribe to our channel. For marvelous videos, I'm Rylan. Have a good one, be safe, and thanks for watching.